What you doing, Mook? I'm about to fix this truck using only a lens cap. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today you join myself, Mook, and this old Ford grain truck in a shed. And today we're going to be getting this old Ford grain truck up and running to use it to take the beans out of our field. Let's get started. What's going on, Mook? Um, it's windy. We're in a tornado it right is, now. It is big windy today, so it's a little loud. We apologize. Today you join us in a shed somewhere in a cornfield in Iowa with this 70s F750 grain truck. That's big. Angus is really missing out. These are his favorite things in the world. This sucker has been not sitting long. I think it's only been here a couple years, but the brakes are out just like every other grain truck ever. And I heard it had carburetor issues, so... That is the scuttlebutt. Actually, it used to be a garbage truck, supposedly, because, yeah, it's, it used to be white, and then it was repainted to this actually really cool gold, red, and black. Shifter handle says five speed. Is it a five? If it's correct. It might be a four with a granny. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's big truck stuff. Yep, it's five. Holy oh. shit. I, <laughs> it cranks. What? <laughs> it's got power. Oh, my God. Oh. Let's see what we're dealing with. Oh, oh yes, the tallest engine bay ever. I see a big old, probably industrial displacement FE here. Uh, we have a four barrel Holly. That's good. We can fix that. 391. The 390 was an FE for sure. I've never heard of the 391. Industrial stuff, I guess. All right, well, the battery's still up, believe it or not. Yeah, so. I put a new battery in it. Oh. Just the other day when I was talking to Ryan. Oh. I think the last time I bought them, I bought three batteries. And I think every time I go somewhere, I gotta buy a battery. <laughs> yep. With all these old tractors. Yep, I hear you there. Yeah, you got some nice old Oliver sitting over here. Yeah. Well, Mook, should we crank it and see what it does? Yeah. She's not quite feeding fuel. Let's get this guy off and uh, get some down the throat. It's pretty dirty. Oh, you wow. said someone worked on this or rebuilt yeah. it or? Supposedly. I say, that thing looks like it hasn't been touched in 30 years. I go with the Colfax. My daughter was putting the swimming pool in. She needed to have pea gravel, you know, oh, okay. down there. Yeah. It conked out on me a couple of times. And then it started and then it'd go away and then it'd make a pop. And hmm. Well, so far she's not drawing fuel, so let's, I brought some gas, we'll throw a few, a couple more gallons in the tank and see what it does. I'll keep track of this stuff so I can pay you. No, 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 you won't know there was a dime, sir. I appreciate you loaning us a grain truck. All right, let's see if we can fill the bowls a little bit. Not very well. <laughs> Might be a little flooded. Oh, you took your sweatshirt off, now you're Farmer Kevin. I am indeed. I'm really a mechanic, I just play a farmer on TV. Let's see if she pops off now. just looked over and it was like a little geyser. Yeah, floats are stuck. The back one is? Yep. The back needle is stuck? Yeah, it's all wet. Oh my gosh, it's level full of gas. <laughs> I can't say I've ever seen that before. <laughs> I imagine we're going to be rebuilding the carburetor. Or a fuel leak in the front now. 
Yeah, that carburetor needs a lot of help. I'm sure our timing is terrible too. It's weird how I'm like flooring it, but nothing's happening. <laughs> like it's not ready. I don't know what that's about. All right, Mook, well, I think we know where to start. We could sit here and screw with it, or we could just take that holly off, go rebuild it, and bring it back. Let's do that one. Look at this big, weird holly. Look how full of gas it is. Oh my gosh. Oh! The rears and the secondaries are seized, I think. Yeah, those secondaries are literally seized. Oh my gosh. So this has been a two barrel for God knows how many years, and it doesn't even open all the way. What is all this? This is a really weird carburetor. It's got this dash pot, this dash pot, this little air filter deal. This dash pot is the normal one for the secondaries. As far as I'm aware, we can make this operate like a normal four barrel or replace it with a normal four barrel. I mean, this doesn't get used much anymore. So look at how dirty it's it's is. bad. One last stop at one of the neighbors. Get this cleaned up before we take it back to the shed. It's actually cleaning up really nice. All cleaned up. Let's get it home. Let's get a car kit and see if we can fix it. All right, we got this all cleaned up. We're here in the shed full of old crap out here on the farm. After a little research, I realized that this is a governed carburetor, which is why it wasn't really revving when I would hit the gas. As you can see, we got this big spring mechanism thingamabob over here. And without moving the throttle linkage, I can move the throttle blades. The idea is if you're driving and you slam on the gas, this comes open slowly on its own using vacuum so that it doesn't jolt the drive line because if you're carrying a whole bunch of weight and you snap a bunch of power into the drive line you're likely to snap a u-joint or break an axle or something like that so this keeps the power delivery smooth this is paired with the distributor which also has some governing systems in it so we're going to try to keep this one and make everything work for the sake of the dump truck and not breaking stuff especially since i'm just borrowing this sucker not owning it. I want whoever hops in this to be able to turn the key and operate it normally. As far as rebuilding this goes, it should be pretty simple. It's essentially a totally classic 4160 here in the center. It's just got this weird stuff on the sides. We'll throw in new needles and seats, put new O-rings in here, new gaskets, new power valve, new accelerator pump, new seals on these guys right here. Just normal stuff from a regular old rebuild kit. Should get this sucker up and running in no time. The one weird thing is the fact that these secondaries are completely stuffed, they don't move at all. And I don't know if that's the throttle shaft that's seized or something goofy in this weird mechanism. So let's dig into it and see if we can figure that out first. All right, I've got our primary dash pot off. Get ready to take this shaft out so I can, wait a minute. I don't think I needed to do that actually. I think these connect, I gotta just loosen this. Duh, they're not one piece, they move individually. God. <laughs> However, I do actually need to take this out regardless because if you can tell right there, that is a ton of play in our throttle shaft. There's a chance this won't be a problem, but I, I'm redoing it for the old man, so it's the least I can do is make sure it's right. The problem here that'll occur is that this will pull in a bunch of air around that shaft, and it will run really lean at idle and maybe not even idle at all. Whoa. <laughs> Those Teflon seals have seen better days. There's nothing else touching this guy anymore. He sure as hell is stuck in the bore, so I might have to heat the base up, wiggle this back and forth. I don't know, but we're going to have to get him out and get him cleaned up too. Okay, suddenly, two seconds later, I do nothing, but these start working. They're not moving very good. They're still difficult to turn, so unless I get that cleaned up, they're never going to open on their own with just vacuum. So the brake clean must have soaked in and finally broke the old gas free. Let's get him fixed regardless. Well, I know it looks like a bomb went off, but I've gone ahead and separated even the lower plate from this thing. Old timer around here that rebuilds carburetor said he had some shaft seals, so I'm going to go get those. That should fix that. This is going straight into our carb dip, if it fits. I hope it do. We'll soak this guy, our metering plates, bowls, take all the seals and stuff out of those. And then once that's all cleaned up, we'll be back in a bit. I know I'm going through this pretty quick, but I just want to show you guys this is something you can do. It's just a matter of seals and high attention to detail and take it slow and have patience. There's a lot better videos of how to rebuild carbs and whole books about it that you can find online, so check those out. For now, like I said, all this going in the carb dip, we'll be back later. 
All right, well, as you can see, parts are laying everywhere, but they're nice and clean now. I've gone through, sprayed out every single passage with brake clean. I had a couple jets down here below the transfer slot, one of them right here that was all clogged up, and it wouldn't move any fluid, so I got my torch cleaner out and fixed him. So that would have been a problem for sure. Would have been a little less fuel for idle. One little tip I have here on reassembly, when you're putting your secondary dash pot diaphragm in, you crush them down all the way like this. It's a giant pain in the ass to get all these to lay flat. But if you stand them up, boop, and make a donut, just like that, that's how they're pressed when they're manufactured. And it will sit right on that surface. Right there, aligned with that hole for our port. Now, of course, there is that big spring that's going to want to push it down all the time, so you have to use that rod on the table and try to float it. But that is a good tip for getting that back together because that is a pain in the butt otherwise. Actually, also, one more thing. Once you get that together, you want to test it. See how you can hear air? Push all the way down, cover that port. That means it's working. If it does not do that, you have a bad diaphragm or it's not aligned if it's a brand new one. Uh, if that is the case, your secondaries on a vacuum secondary will not open. You will have a two barrel carburetor. Fun stuff. All right, now let's finish this thing. I lied, we're back once again. One more thing to talk about. These are the Teflon seals. Uh, these, notice how thick this one is, versus this one, what's left of it. Paper thin, not so paper thin. These are going to seal our shafts back into our base plate and keep those vacuum leaks from getting in and help this thing run a lot better. On the rear there's one, two, three, four. On the rear there's one, two, three, four. On the front there's a big one. Two, three, I believe. And I'm gonna need both hands for this. All right, let me finish this up, get everything back together, we'll be back. Holy hell, there it is. Fully rebuilt, Holly governed Holly. 4150, I think. I don't know. What I do know is that it is 1130 at night. I am exhausted. I think all our seals and everything in there are good to go. We'll find out tomorrow when we go throw it on the truck. We'll see you guys then. Good morning. I was here all night. Oh, were you? Well, I was in the shed all night and I made this. A fully rebuilt liquid tested carburetor. I ran some fuel through it this morning, kind of dialed in our float heights. She should be ready to go. No leaks. Everything functions properly. Let's get it on there and see how it does. Big moment of truth. I lost one of the mounting bolts. Nuts. It, it was a nut, but also nuts. Regardless, she's all hooked up. Hopefully that's not a huge vacuum leak. If it is, we'll go find a fine thread 5 sixteenths somewhere in this cornfield. Only thing left to do now is uh, turn the key and see what happens. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, love that. It had a few flooded cylinders and then they cleared out and then it died. So I think the problem I'm facing right now is our needle and seat is set too low. Dry right here, you can see a port. I've removed the cap. What I'm gonna do is run this engine until the fuel is right at the bottom of that port. Then I'll know that it's set right. And as you can see, got fluid right at the bottom of that hole. And it's finally sitting here running. It's definitely running out of fuel. I need to do that for the back and then we'll be set. Well, 
We can start tuning. Everybody still needs a bit of help. Okay, I got the carburetor to stay running. Let's give it a little more timing. Stands, the pedal just goes straight to the floor and does particularly nothing. Let's see if we can change that. Probably a blown line somewhere. I don't know. Ooh. Ew. That's not what I wanted to see. It's still kind of moist, so the seals might still be okay, but there's a lot of poop in there. Oh, actually, that's not horrible. There we go. Good bubbles coming out. It's either bleeding really well, or there's a hole in the line, and it's all just running right back out onto the ground. See anything? Oh my god, a giant brick booster of confusion and scariness. Oh, I don't know anything about these brake systems. I just know they're big and complicated, and they're like vacuum over hydraulic. I don't, I don't even know. This is our brake booster. The cylinder up there on the firewall is essentially a slave, and I believe this is our master. No idea what the hell that thing is and why it has such big lines running through it. This is our big vacuum booster diaphragm. Oh, that's probably vacuum. What I do know is that right there is a drum parking brake and that, <laughs> that would probably get us wherever we need to go. What do you say we pull this out of here so we can see better and figure out the brakes? Yeah. Okay. Just do anything for the last half inch. Little <laughs> Lord. Move it. Radio doesn't work. Sad. Look at what the horn does. Does the box? Bit to get it going, it was a little finicky. There we Whoa! Go. Where does it sit? Oh, right there. Oh! Now I just let the hydraulics down. And now it's safe to go underneath the vehicle. It'll work in here. With that being said, the brakes are up there. <laughs> I guess that's how that works, though. Now we, we've all learned. Look at that. <laughs> Dang it. Look at the size of that cylinder, though. I saw that. She's gonna haul some beans. Now, I don't think I've even mentioned it yet, but there's a time factor to this revival. Believe it or not, the rains are coming. And I mean, a week of rain. And our beans have been in for so long because we've been so busy that if that rain hits them, it'll take all the beans right off the plant and just knock them to the ground. So if we don't get this son bitch up and running, everything working, and back home by tomorrow, we will lose the beans. The rains are coming, Mook. 
Specifically tomorrow night, actually, I believe. Yeah. All right, let's get these brakes fixed. Not exactly a lot going on here with the pedal. Wow. I really thought that would have bled up. <laughs> Dang. Well, why did you guys get an F700? 750? Come on, that 50 matters. Yeah, I would be lying if I said I knew anything about that style of system because that is way old in comparison to anything I would touch. Hmm. Oh, wait, here's a here's a part number. Hydrovac, okay. That I can Google. What does it have for an engine, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, is that that Super Duty engine we were talking about? 391. Oh, it's an FT? Gross. Is that just the FE but beefed up or something? Uh, the FTs are a modified FE. The crank snout on the FTs are a larger diameter because uh, occasionally they'd have accessory drives for like air compressors and shit. All right, have fun. Don't die. Can't promise any of that. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Wyatt. Yeah, no problem. It's never good when the heavy truck guys say, oh. <laughs> Time for a Google and a nap. All right, well, a little Googling. Figured out a couple things. There's a bleed screw down there on the bottom. This is the master cylinder. The other one's called the remote booster. Uh, basically, we're gonna treat this like a normal system. We're gonna start at the top, get this thing working, and then move to the next component, and the next component, and so on and so forth. Chances are, one of these is junk, but go ahead, go down. Oh shit, this one works. Up, down. Up. Down. Up. Let's move on to the remote booster. Down. Down. Holy crap. Up. Up. Down. Down. Up. Up. Down. Down. Up. Nothing? Nothing. All right, well, we got fluid to this. Let's move on to the wheel cylinders. Oh, up. Up. Down. Oh, man. Down. Yeah, I'm hearing the drums move. Up. Up. Down. Down. You got a good pedal? Um, until then. Yeah, I did, actually. Try it now. I hear the brakes moving. Sweet. Okay, let's move to the fronts. Rears are done. If I get time, I'll probably replace those because they probably need replaced, but this should get us home. Well, I didn't even make it to that corner. We blow a line? Mm -hmm. Let me guess. Hit it? Yep, I see him. Right there. Alright, let's replace the rear lines. We're going to be working on some brake lines here. We figured we'd move this off of the sharp, uncomfortable rocks and over here under the grass. The Chevy. The c one o. By the way, there's still a few days left if you guys have not gone to JunkyardDiggs.com and got your exclusive, limited time only, pre-order only c one o t-shirt. Head to JunkyardDiggs.com right now and get them. you got a couple of days left to get on that order before they're gone forever. Okay, brake lines. Everything on the axle, pretty much junk. This piece right here, not very good either. I need to redo that. The problem is that soft line. I don't know if I can find another one of those. So we got to go do a little dig in there. We've got a few hours of sunlight and warmth left for the day. So I'm going to dig into this and see if we can just knock this out. All right. Here's our first line. That immediately broke. <laughs> yeah, there was nothing left of that. Don't eat it. There's your fly in my eyes. <laughs> the wind's blowing dust in them. Rust. I got rust in my teeth. No. <gasps> Should we just get to it, Moop? Yeah. Let's get to it. Ugh. All right, there we go. That's the last flare for the rear axle. She's got all new lines now. Still has the old rubber hose, but that'll be here tomorrow morning. I, uh, if I can get the other end out of it, we might be able to get it to bleed up just enough to get it home tonight. That'd be pretty awesome. And then tomorrow, before we haul grain and put weight in the truck, I have put a new hose on. Oh, you gotta be shitting me. I got the wrong size fitting. <laughs> Son of a... <sighs> Are you sure you know what you're doing? Sometimes. Could you get me this, but one size smaller? Are you sure? Yeah. Well, it's not bigger, I'll tell you that. <laughs> okay, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, gosh. You done yet? Bro. <laughs> I'm kidding. 
Hi guys, this is Mook. It's day 77 of waiting for the brakes to be finished. Survival's not looking great, and the brakes are still not great. Kevin's still stuck under the truck. Yeah. It's not like it. Send help, guys. Send help. Anyway, I'll check back in on day 90 or so. I don't know. Goodbye. Day 90 has arrived. It's getting darker and colder by the second. There's some sheep over there. Maybe I can steal some of their wool and knit me a sweater. Mook, it's been a half hour. I made myself a bed in this grass. I don't know if we'll ever get home. Over here, you'll see a tire that talks. <laughs> Okay, maybe this tire only knows sign language. <laughs> it's day 102 now. The the brakes are we're still missing a part or a piece, a union, that thing. I don't know if you can hear, but off in the distance there's wolves barking. They're closing in on us. I don't know if we're gonna survive much longer. I would say that I'll do a 120 day check-in, but I don't know if we'll make it. Winter is upon us. Why are you like this? <laughs> We got a union. I'm gonna go union the brake lines together, and then we're done. We can just bleed them and leave, Mook. It's only been like an hour and a half. <laughs> it's literally day 110 right now. Wolves are getting closer. There's no wolves! <laughs> the last melon, Mook. That's a union. The last union. Or you could say, the last melon. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> By the way, this style of line flaring tool is awesome especially when you're up in a frame like this i will leave a amazon affiliate link down below you can use that to get a 3 16 or a quarter and we get a little kickback from amazon so go check that out down yonder i'll also put a link for the brake line kits i get there's the first half now i flip this around and i'll have a perfect inverted flare Ta -da. There's so much grease and oil on that master cylinder, or that, that lift cylinder. It looks like poop. Yeah. Don't touch it! Oh, it's rock hard. <laughs> I didn't see that part coming. What's the singular of sheep? Is it shoop? <laughs> I think it's shep. It's <laughs> shep? Yeah. There's a shep over there. No, I like shoop more. Well, they call them shepherds, right? Not sheepherds. Shoop. Get back here, Mr. Shoop. <laughs> All right, brake lines are done. This thing will be safe to be on the road for years to come. Everything's new back here. Sweet, let's get them bled before we lose the sun. We already lost the sun. Come on, Mook, the rains are coming. Oh, God, it literally is. Oh, come on. Work with me. There, girls. All right, here's the deal. I can't get the, that bleeder on the passenger side corner. It's about to snap off. There's like nothing left. But I believe we have a front left brake and a rear right, which in theory should balance out, right? Oh wow, those are rock hard. Yeah, that, they're working. Look how far you got to bring the clutch out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, oh, sad, sad now. now. <laughs> Journey home. We have about five miles from here. Oh shit, it's in gear. And apparently it starts in gear. <laughs> Alright. And with that, we're off. Let's get some lights on. Ooh, dash lights. The one headlight. Let's hit the road. Alright, here we go. Back on the road again. First time it's had a working carburetor in a long time and brakes in two years. Let's go get the beans out. The rains are coming. <laughs> this is too damn fun. Look at this. 
we've been race car drivers, mechanics, farmers, boat captains, and now we're truckers. And there's shit falling everywhere. Man, we've done it all on this channel. Ooh, brakes work pretty good. They actually lock up. Wow. Non-synchronized first and second. I guess so we're starting in third. Sorry, old girl. I ain't got two hands. Here's a good example of the governor in action. On the floor. Off the floor. On the floor. Off the floor. On the floor. Just kind of cruising along. <laughs> I think I can adjust the spring in there to make that rev faster. Hell yeah. Yeehaw! That's on the wooden fifth, baby. We're doing. 42, a little downhill, a little downhill, hang on to her, 45. It's that 771 rear gear and governed carburetor and distributor coming along to do us some good. How much I mean, we don't really get to go anywhere ever. We just kind of meander around. <laughs> I think I'm definitely going to make an adjustment to the governor. There's a spring that I can move. It's got like five or six positions. And I'm assuming that dictates how fast the carburetor comes open. Yeah, we're going to turn that up so I can do more than 40. All right, a little bit left. We made it! I apparently got the last bit of my headlights out of this thing. I hit the high beam one last time and I lost them. Well, at right. least we're home. All right, now we have ourselves a grain truck that runs and drives. Let's use it to get the beans out tomorrow morning. We'll see you then. Can it push me over? <laughs> do a burnout. <laughs> I won't do 50. Don't <laughs> <was> wide open. <laughs> Ah yes, day two, or three, I forget. Good morning folks. This morning I ran into town and grabbed ourselves a new brake hose for the back of the grain truck. I'm gonna take a second and throw that on right now. One last safety precaution, so that when we're all loaded up with beans, we can have nice safe brakes on this sucker. And speaking of beans, ladies and gentlemen, the bean field. Unlike the corn we did last year, these suckers did amazing. But these beans are no shit waist high. Like they come up to my hips. All summer we had nearly five foot tall bean plants, which I don't think I've ever seen. These did incredible. They are packed full of beans. You can see they're still on the stock. The rain is coming tonight. There's already a few thunder boomers over there on the horizon. So this afternoon, my cousin Ben is going to come out with his combine. We're gonna take all this out, put it in that sucker right there, and haul them to town. But before we do that, like I said, let's get this on and bleed these off one last time. Well, I had to do it quick so I didn't lose too much fluid, but there you have it, the new soft line is in. At this point, I'll grab Mook, do a little more bleeding on that rear, get those bubbles out of that line, and this son bitch is ready to go. With that, we'll see you guys this afternoon for some farming. About time to give her the beans. All right, the time has come. It's finally time to start doing farm stuff. Right now, my cousin is finishing the last of his corn with his combine. I'm gonna go get his bean head and bring it here so that when he gets here, we can switch the combine over and pull the beans out of this field. Let's hit the road. Let's see if the old F-250 has got what it takes to tow a bean head. As far as power, yeah, it'll be just fine. Brakes? Eh, pretty sure I unknowingly installed a boosted master on this truck, so the brakes are very heavy. All right, let's go. Uh-oh. Might not have chose the right vehicle. Pull together, old girl, we're almost there. Alrighty. Well, we made it. There's the bean head. Let's get her hooked up. And just like that, we're ready to go. You know, usually I say, come on, little buddy, but that is not the case today. Come on, giant buddy. All right, here we go. Take out every mailbox in the county. Oh, yeah. The old girl don't care at all. Just freaking idling right along. This is gonna be a cakewalk as long as I don't ever have to use that pedal. All right, back roads all the way home. Top speed, 25 mile an hour. Let's do it. Basically Mario Andretti right now. Freaking lightning McBean out here, hell yeah. Come on, old girl. Uh, up the hill. 
Don't mind the washboards. Let me eat. This is going way better than I imagined, but I mean, we're only doing 25, so that's really not asking a lot. We got a mile left. I'll see you when we make it to the house. Good job. All right, we've got a grain truck. We've got a bean head. We're down to the last couple ingredients, a combine and the guy who operates it. Let's hop in the C10 and go get them. And just like that, we've arrived just in time to see the last bit of corn pulled out of the field. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the combine we're gonna use this year. A Case IH, a 1660 axial flow. It's a 1992, I do believe. This is Ben's combine. Um, no, it's not something old and abandoned, but the one we were going to use got cut up in the scrap and I, Literally, it would have taken me all summer to fix one, so. Green truck revival, working combine, way better combo. Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, it looks like I'm just in time. Yeah. <laughs> the last piece. The last piece. All done. Ready to switch it to back to beans? <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> all right. You tell me what we're doing, because I don't know. Uh, first off, we're going to get some corn out of the tank, so I'll okay. get the leaf blower, and we'll just try to get her, get her all blown to the trap. What a goddamn American hero, look at this. Oh yeah. <laughs> when you eat your corn-based cereal in the morning, you remember, it's this man. Let's climb up and take a look. 8.3 Cummins, this is actually a uh, filter for the radiator. It spins to keep stuff from sticking to it. There's our feed auger that comes from below where all the corn is shelled and sifted out and thrown in here. And then our unload auger into the wagon. Is this bucket gonna be whiskey or cornflakes? <laughs> all right, we're all clean. We gotta change some stuff over on the red. They got veins right here that you adjust. So in corn, you slow them down and then you, you adjust these forward in beans and it speeds the material up running it through the combine. Huh. Your cobs with the kernels on them get fed into here and actually does most of it up in the front part of it. Okay. And then it just rotates. This stays still. Yep, this stays still. Okay. There's a big rotor on the inside here that Yep, the shiny bit turns, in there. And it just works the grain against these grates and against each other and the grain falls through. Gets collected on these shoe augers and runs back, falls through chaffer and gets picked up by a clean grain auger and an elevator and goes to the top okay so that separates all this shit from the yep. corn and that's what blows out from your fan well that's simple enough <laughs> what could possibly go wrong the rotor speed itself is a gearbox so the beans we run them faster so we'll push this in there we go that's the second gear for the gearboxes we got to speed the rotor up for beans so we're gonna run the chopper so we gotta speed it up so it's driven from up top so bigger pulley up top for the speed a smaller pulley down here all right we're gonna I need to close the shoe sieve and I'm going to close the chaffer just a little bit because I was running open quite a ways in the corn. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Having a little trouble getting to our last adjustment here, so he's going to fire it up, turn the fan speed way up, and blow everything out. Oh, yeah. The things are doing stuff. Interesting. Oh, you can see the rotors going. Like that did it. International on these, the concave adjustment's just right here. You just crank it to lower it and then ratchet it to raise it up. And what that's doing is that's changing your clearance between these grates and the and, rotor. Okay. So your crush higher size. tolerances for threshing. We'll start with it open a little farther than what I think it needs to be. That way we can always close it if we need to. Because so they're so dry. Not being so hard on them. Yeah. So we sped the chopper up. That was that pulley changing with oh, the yep, yep, on the yep. other side. And now we're just going to put the knives up. 
and then and this chops up everything that's coming out the back in the smaller pieces it'll, yep it'll chop the bean stubble or chop the beans into stubble okay uh, there's, they don't there's have knives that rotate like pretty much kind of like this okay and then there's the rotating and then the stators uh, what i just adjusted they're like knives that just come up so it's got to crisscross everything okay they don't have small little bits of shit on all the snowmobile tracks this winter yeah. The last step before we head to our place, red fuel for the red machine. Get her fueled up, hit the road. Yeehaw! Holy shit, an old cleaner. Look at that! Also, this shed. How is that legal in any zone? <laughs> wow! This son bitch is two foot off the side of the road. A few minutes later, we've arrived. The sun is dropping quick. Let's get the corn head off this and get the bean head on and get the beans out of the field. As you can see, the Snuffleupagus has detached as the male Snuffleupagus follows a scent trail towards a female bean head. Don't know how much of this we can show when I explain it that way. I'll provide the sound effects. He approaches from behind. Yep, nope, we can't show that. Well, that's censored. Let's uh, let's see a professional farmer assessment. How did we do? How are the beans? These beans look good. They <laughs> look Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a choice. They're ready. What? <laughs> <laughs> Tastes like beans. Good. Let's, Miller Crunchy. Let's farm They're a little hard. <laughs> no, these look good up here. What was the, the moisture content on that batch test? I don't know. I'm not good at it. They're dry. <laughs> All right, they're pretty dry. You're not going to get knocked at the co-op. <laughs> okay, real quick. Here's the plan we've devised based on elevation and road direction. To sum it up, there's beans in the field, and we're going to make that change. Okay, here we go. All that work this spring with all that abandoned equipment. Here we go. already done like a third of the field. We really should have just called him last year. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna be done in 15 minutes. How are you? What is that? You want this giant bean? Yeah, I'll put it in the hopper. No! <laughs> is that a loofah? Yeah. Damn, we got air conditioning in here this year? Hells yeah. What the hell? Why didn't I call you last year? You've done more in six minutes than we did in like the first four hours. <laughs> We know the first field, you think? Yeah, okay. they're not too bad. We're, we're Let me check the yield monitor. We're collecting them. Yes, none. <laughs> <laughs> the yield monitor says there is yield. Good, good. <laughs> That's it. All right, let's fill this sucker up. First field. Okay, old girl, you can, oh wow, <laughs> you can take the weight. Oh yeah, that's like perfect. The other field's a little bigger, might give us like half a truck load. I'll take that. All right, let's keep her going. Here's we've harvested beans. <laughs> we did it. That'll do it. 
Ben, thank you very much, You're sir. Welcome, Kevin. So there we go, folks. We have two thirds of the box of that truck worth of beans. No idea what that equates to, but finally, the bean fields are empty. That looks good. That was stressing me out for quite some time. Huge thanks to Ben for helping us out. It went exponentially faster this way using a modern combine. Now we get to haul it all in with this old Revival Green truck. I'm looking forward to this. As you can tell though, the sun is ducking behind the horizon. You remember, I uh, hit the high low beam one last time yesterday and all the lights cut out. Plus, the camera can't see in the dark and I am not gonna run this old grain truck in the dark, so we will haul these in in the morning when we have more time. For now, I'm gonna go help Ben clean up his combine and put everything away for the year. We'll see you guys in the morning. Holy shit, look at this big ass bug! Get out of here, get! Good morning, Luke. Good morning. How are you? Good. That's great. Today's the day. Are you excited? Are yeah. you ready? Yeah. We are taking the beans in today. First things first, I gotta make an adjustment on that governor so we can still get there today. Now, as you can see, there's a spring in here. I'm gonna remove him, set him off to the side, and move this peg from two to position one. Turn the governing effect off even more. Speed and power, right, Moot? Yeah. Put everything back together and head to town. Let's do it. That's better. We sunk in a hole overnight. I guess so. But we do have a bit of weight in here, finally. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe. It's just a little cold yet. Six, the highest number that's the least covered. At this rate, we are never gonna get to the elevator, so I'm gonna stop and make that adjustment because if nothing else, I'll at least know if I can pick. Let's turn that sucker up to like four. The way this works is that as my throttle opens, which I can't really do right now, it allows this spring to pull the throttle blades open. Because remember, those are not mechanically connected. However, this dash pot here, this, this uh, vacuum pot here, pulls them closed all the time. So what I can do, in theory, is I believe the tighter I make that spring, the better this will rev out. Let's go for position three. Looks to be a pretty good one to me. I got I brought my pliers. 
Okay, let's get her reassembled and try it again. That already seems more responsive. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Six is the fastest setting, not one. Look at this. New speed record already. Stealing all our beans. Ah! The aliens are taking them. That was a probe that takes beans and sucks them through a tube into the office so then they can test moisture and stuff and see how much they weigh. So that when we weigh in and out, they can figure out how much beans we had. So now we will go weigh. All right, here's the scale 23,000 pounds. Ah, got a pit too. Okay. us farmers taking our grain to the elevator to help feed America. Oh boy, now we gotta do the whole dumpy dumpy part. In any guesses? Two pounds out. Two thousand? No, probably five. Five thousand? I don't know. I don't know how much this truck weighs. I don't know. <laughs> Twenty-three thousand is a lot of pounds. Ten thousand. Did we get any mail? Yes, we did. And just like that, Mook, our time at the elevator is done. Look. We really didn't have to get out. They've got quite a system here. Yeah. 217.33 bushels of beans. Nice. 13,000 pounds of beans. I did, I did not see that coming. I think beans are up this year, actually. Corn was up last year, and beans are up this year. So we're, uh, we're really good at picking what crop to plant. All right, let's head on home. And with that, we return from which we came. Drop the old grain truck off in the same shed we got it from. Maybe use it again next year. Maybe find another one. You never know. You're back home. Like I said in the beginning, we did not purchase this. We're just borrowing it. So a huge thank you to Tom for letting us use his grain truck. As promised, here it is. Back in his yard. All new brake lines, rebuilt carburetor. Ready to go. Proven and tested. With that folks, 217.33 bushels of beans later, we we'll draw our 2023 harvest season to a close. Thank you to Mook, Ben, his kids, Tom, and our neighbors for all the help they've done throughout the growing season. We'll see you guys right here next week for another episode of Junkyard Digs. Peace. All right, Mook, let's start walking home. Whee!